The movie begins with a story that happened 1,000 years ago, where a kingdom once lived in peace, until the monsters attacked the city, laying waste to everyone in its part. But in that darkest hour, a hero rose up, and her name is called Glorith, who casted the monster away from the city. She promises never to let the city vulnerable again to monsters by training knights and decree that their descendants will keep protecting the kingdom from generation to come. 1,000 years later, there is a huge excitement and tension in the city of Glorodome, as two knights called Nate and Davis announces the commencement of the knighting ceremony. It is time to pronounce the chosen knights, which includes Ballister Boldheart, a man who came from the lineage of a commoner, and Ambrosius, a direct descendant of Glorith. The people do not seem to accept Ballister, as it is not right for a commoner to be a knight. Meanwhile, Ballister sits in the gallery, brooding over the possibility of becoming a knight. His boyfriend, Ambrosius, joins Ballister and cheers him up, tagging him as the hero of the realm and providing a shoulder for him to lean on. All the cadets gather in the dressing room, and one of the cadets bullies Ballister, calling him a charity case. They all stay in attention the moment the director enters the room. The director addresses them, with a drive on motivating them to be the will of Glorith. She halts in front of Ballister, encouraging him. Ambrosius scoffs and tells Ballister that he is the teacher's pet. As soon as Ballister enters the dome, he is amazed to see the multitude of people present to watch the ceremony. Even the queen is ready to pronounce the cadets as knights. It is time, and when it gets to Ballister's turn, the queen makes a special announcement that anyone from any descendants can be a knight as long as they earn it, just like Ballister. Ballister receives a hearty congratulation from the queen amidst the cheers and applause from the crowd. However, catastrophe occurs on stage as Ballister's sword electrocutes the queen to the floor. Sensing danger, Ambrosius attacks Ballister with his sword. He cuts off the latter's right hand. The sword sends the gigantic LED light to the floor of the stage, and Ballister becomes wanted for killing the queen. Despite vile statements from every other person in Mona, the strange kid thinks Ballister is perfect. Few days after the incident, we see Ballister creating a still arm for himself in a secret lair. Suddenly, there is a knock at the door, and this startles Ballister. He picks up a broken bottle and heads for the door slowly. Ballister opens the door, but he finds nobody there. Just as he turns his back, he finds Nimona, who calls him Boss. Ballister sees Nimona as a kid and orders her to go back. The kid goes ahead to ransack Ballister's equipment and hands over some weird drawings as her CV. Nimona offers to be Ballister's psychic and help in revenge on the cruel world that had rejected him. On sighting some pictures on the wall, Nimona tags it as a villain murder wall, but Ballister debunks the villain title and tries to claim his innocence, calling it an innocence wall. Nimona becomes disappointed and Ballister leaves his secret lair in annoyance to try and prove his innocence. Unfortunately, he gets arrested without getting an explanation from him. The director fears Ballister, despite the latter's innocence. She admits that her trust in him was gone and her foolishness had cost the queen. Ballister begs to have an audience with Ambrosius, but the director tells him that he won't be seeing anyone as Ambrosius is devastated as well. Ballister sinks into despair as the director leaves. Nimona's appearance in the prison catches him off guard as she has a plan to get Ballister out of prison. However, the plan won't be that smooth as Nimona breaks the lock. As they run out, Ballister takes the lead and begs Nimona to hide if she sees anyone. However, the kid is too headstrong to listen to her boss. She breaks statues and other equipment as she passes. The alarm buzzes and the knights of the institute run after them. Ballister queries Nimona about her destructive plan, but the kid claims her plan is better than that of his broody plan of remaining in prison. As the duo argues, they run into Ambrosius, a new knight. Surprised to see Ballister with one arm, Ambrosius stares at him. The knights come in full force and Nimona drags Ballister to a room. She smacks him on the head, warning him to snap out of his broodiness. Everyone thinks he killed the queen, and no matter how much he tries, nobody will believe him. Nimona begs him not to freak out, as she has a weird way to take them out. There is no time to waste, and Ballister promises his life not to freak out. Instantly, Nimona transforms into a big rhinoceros, defeating the knights and running over Ambrosius. As they run off, Nimona transforms into a bear, an ostrich, a whale, and finally a human. Finally, Ballister wakes up in his secret lair. She offers him breakfast tacos, but Ballister wonders how long he was asleep. While Ballister slept, Nimona had changed the whole appearance of the lair. She shows Ballister new weapons and a total change of his murder wall. Slowly, some fractions of his memory come back, and Ballister calls Nimona a monster. The fierce Nimona comes into play, and she warns Ballister not to call her a monster. The latter wonders what she is and why she was helping him. Nimona mentions that she is bored, and since everybody hates him, she wants to help him. Ballister stares at the murder wall and discovers that the squire might know something. 
Now, Mona is ready to get the squire since he was the one that handed Ballister the sword, but Ballister is not ready for Nimona's vile methods of doing things. She plays hard to get, awaiting Ballister's pleas. Ballister finally gives in, but Nimona offers a condition that she has to be his psychic forever. The one-armed knight agrees to this, and Nimona teases him by transforming into a shark. At the Institute, all the knights pack the remnants of the destroyed Institute. The director wonders how Ballister got rescued by a girl, an ostrich, and a whale. Todd accuses Ambrosius of knowing Ballister's accomplices. The director scolds them and reminds them that a villain is on the loose. Todd wants the lead so he can get Ballister behind bars, but Ambrosius opts to find Ballister since he is the closest to the wanted man. The director agrees to a direct descendant of Glorth to find Ballister. Ambrosius sets to action, ordering all knights to find Ballister at all costs. While the knights are looking everywhere for the lurking Ballister, the one-armed man is on his way to find the squire, with Nemona who is transformed into a cat. He begs her to let things go his way, so no one gets hurt. Nemona ignores his warnings and transforms into a human with wings. They are distracted by a broadcast message from the director, telling the citizens to remain calm. Ballister suggests they go underground and use the Vanquisher Square station. In a bid to distract the knights around the train station, Nemona transforms into Ballister and scares people away. The knights run after her, but as expected, she transforms into a cat and enters the train with Ballister. Unfortunately, Ambrosius and the rest of the knights in the surveillance camera room finally get a glimpse of Ballister at the train station. Ambrosius can find the real Ballister and gets information that the train is headed to the market. They all get there armed and ready to attack Ballister and his accomplice, but Nimona is smart enough to fly on the roof with Ballister, posing as a giant monkey this time. The duo finally sees the squire at the market. Nemona transforms into a little boy and asks the squire for help. The squire refuses to help Nemona, and she ends up dragging him. Meanwhile, a woman forces Ballister to buy a newly modeled aircraft. This little aircraft later helps Nemona and Ballister take away the squire, letting the arrows land on the flying car. Nemona and Ballister arrive at a safe spot. It is a lovely, intense moment as Ballister pulls out an arrow from Nemona's leg. They bond and talk without arguing as Ballister treats Nemona's wound. To Ballister's shock, the kid barely feels pain. The squire calls their attention from the trunk. Ballister gets a confession from the squire, a confession backed up by evidence that the director exchanged his sword, and Ambrosius was aware of this. This leaves Ballister in utter disappointment. And Mona is barely surprised, and she asked Ballister to upload the video, but the latter is against the idea. He intends to show the video to Ambrosius, and Mona is against this as well. She concurs with the idea, ready to break stuff if things go south. They approach the Institute, fortunate enough to be Ambrosius and the director. The moment Ballister brings out the phone to show Ambrosius the video, Todd shoots the phone off his hands, with thoughts that it is a weapon. Ambrosius doubts his friend and inquires to know about Nemona. He draws out his sword. This action of Ambrosius hurts Ballister, and he proceeds to fulfill Nemona's wants, breaking stuff. Ballister and Nemona, who have now shape-shifted into a big monkey, engage in a fight with the knights. While they fight, Ambrosius finally gets to talk to Ballister. He wonders who the little kid is, but Ballister defends Nemona. Things get rough as Todd corners Ballister and electrocute Nemona, but she never fails to show off. Nemona becomes stronger and defeats them again, posing as a dragon this time. However, a monster attack alarm blows off. Nemona tries to save a little girl, but the girl calls her a monster. This makes Nemona so angry that she almost gets caught. Ballister comes to the rescue and wonders what ruined Nemona's mood. He finally agrees with her about the Institute, the Wall, and Ambrosius. However, Nimona agrees to stay behind and put an end to everything by getting the director. The duo smile as they nail the director's pictures of the Wall. Meanwhile, things at the Institute do not look too good as they suppose Ambrosius barges into the director's office. He questions her about what Ballister spoke about, but the director stabs Ambrosius with a sword after admitting to her crimes. However, the dead Ambrosius is Nimona. Ballister enters, excited that he finally has a recording of the director. Immediately they leave, the real Ambrosius barges in. Nimona and Ballister upload the footage, gaining the interest of the whole kingdom. The duo gets excited about their efforts, and they bond with each other again. However, Ambrosius demands an audience with Ballister, sending a coded message. At the Antlered Serpent Bar, Ambrosius begs Ballister to stay away from Nimona as she is evil and manipulative. He shows Ballister an old scroll found in the Institute's vault, referring to Nimona as Glorus Monster. Ballister refuses to believe Ambrosius' claims, and he walks away. Ambrosius runs after him, begging him to destroy Nimona together. Ballister returns home to be a sleeping Nimona. He calls her a monster, and this makes her angry despite all they've been through. Unknown to them, 
Todd had followed Ballister and he barges into their secret lair. Namona runs away to the woods. Now, this is the scene you have been waiting for. Namona finally tells her story. She used to be friends with Glorith, the savior of the kingdom. Glorith knew her true form until one day things changed. Her only friend denied her when she needed help the most. Namona's thoughts hunt her, and she transforms into her true monster form. However, Todd and the other knights torture Ballister. Glorodov is in danger as Nimona approaches. Goldemoin attempts to clear the streets and calm the people, but things get worse. The gnarls of Nimona can be heard. The monster is near. The city is thrown into chaos as Nimona appears. The drones and knights engage Nimona, but the monster's eyes lay on the Institute. Noticing that things have gotten out of hand, the director orders that the cannon be directed at the kingdom so the monster can be eliminated. She ignores Golden Loin's warnings that innocent people may die. Nevertheless, Nimona wants to end it all. Just as she steps forward to the tip of the sword, Ballister pushes her away. The knight apologizes with an affirmation that she is not alone. Those words melt Nimona and she transforms into her human self immediately. Nimona is badly injured, but she falls into Ballister's arms. Meanwhile, Goldemoyen stops the director from firing the cannons to destroy Nimona. He points out the probability of their stance against Nimona, but the director attacks him and fires the cannon. It's time to rewrite the story as Nimona attacks the director and the cannon. There is utmost silence and darkness, but Goldemoyen finds his way to Ballister and consoles him. The city returns to normal with Ballister free. Goldemoyen and Ballister become friends again, but Nimona is nowhere to be found. Maybe there is actually no happily ever after. The citizens of Glorodom are excited. They proclaim Nimona as a hero. Ballister runs to the secret lair where he stayed with Nimona. He rearranges the lair and pins a drawing to the wall. Suddenly, Ballister hears a familiar pounding on the door. He thinks it's Nimona, and yes, he is right. Nimona may be dead, but her presence is still felt. If you love animation movies, please subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Bye.